Hey guys, today we have Nikon's new Coolpix L30. Now it's one of the entry level cameras that Nikon has brought in in the first quarter of this year. So it's a pretty tiny camera and that's why the small packet here, so you see that's the silver color camera that we have. It also comes in two more colors, the black and the red one. 20.1 uh, megapixel, the USB of the device, another USB that it runs on AA size batteries which are easily available everywhere and also kind of cheaper than your other um, alkaline or other kind of batteries. And then you have your 5x Nikkor zoom lens and then a glamour retouch to uh, correct your face blemishes and all. And then it also comes with a 3 inch LCD of course not touch screen. Nothing much on the packet out here you see uh, the pricing information here. The MRP you will see that 5950 that's the same uh, price listed on Nikon India site but if you search online, you would get on Amazon.in for just over 4,700 rupees, on Amazon.com in the US for about $74, and if you happen to be in the UK, you might get it for about £69 on Amazon.co.uk. And on the back side, you'll see what's in the box, which we're gonna show to you anyway. So once you open the box, the first thing you would see is the user manual here, and then some service center list. And then you have your data cable which is not micro USB it's more kind of a mini USB and yeah see. and then also your double A size batteries here they see and then your solder strap and finally you have the Nikon L30 come on baby yeah so that's the Nikon L30 out there. So that's all in the box. It does not need a charger because it runs on AA size batteries. So that's your Nikon L30 and it's pretty non-pretentious camera really. Uh, not exactly the thinness. It does not go on the style. So that's for the S series. Um, the good thing is that it's metallic. So it uh, it's, has a very thin sheet of metal and it's not exactly weather shield kind of you have the 5x Nikkor zoom here uh, 1 by 2.3 inch sensor and you see 4.6 to 23 mm which kind of will start from about 26 mm in 35 mm equivalent and it's a pretty slow lens you can see the max aperture at the uh, wide end is 3.2 and goes up to 6.5 and this is some of the other things here you have your auto focus assist lamp the Nikon branding the flash here yeah. also have a mic out here on the top you have the um, that's the shutter release button the zoom lever the power button now uh, you have a speaker out here here you have like you know where you can tie your solder strap the eyelet behind you have the 3 inch LCD which is not a touch screen by the way and then all this dot just to give you a good hold when you you know hold the camera in one hand and by the way the hole here is pretty good although there is no rubber here to grip properly but uh, you can grip it even when it's like metal and kind of plastic here so it's not bad the grip then your dedicated video button the CPU uh, indicator there scene button then some of the usual other buttons below you have the tripod mount and then your battery compartment and it takes full SD card um, yeah I see you can also by the way use micro SD cards uh, with a adapter so once you switch on the camera here there's a nice round indicator around the power button as well and that's your display screen it's pretty low res mind you not touch screen of course and you have various buttons out here so one you can straight away go to scenes from here so I'm in the auto mode you can also go to this is smart portrait mode and then you have some various scene modes like portrait and landscape sports sunset food they work pretty well and then you have a easy auto mode where like the camera kind of takes over everything and then you also have a playback mode here let's see that's one of the photos we take in playback mode if you go to a menu you can go delighting and you can glamour retouch from there it cannot be modified because it cannot detect a face there you can print and rotate image and some of the other things that you can do and when you come out of the playback mode just by pressing I don't know yeah let's see and then 
if you go to menu it's again pretty straightforward and what we like are the big fonts out here that's even um, you know very good for um, elderly people who do not want a, a high-end camera or a much advanced camera but want a decent camera but which easily readable menu so you have your image mode the cmax 20 mp you can also go down to pretty low image sizes you have your white balance and continuous shot drive mode basically and then we have your single continuous shot multi shot and all those stuffs and then your color option like yeah standard or vivid and other things and then your video mode movie option the max it can record is 720p at 30 fps and then a focus mode in movie generally it's always advisable to keep in full focus mode that is continuous focus it will continuously drag the subject electronic VR so the L30 uh, supports electronic vibration reduction which means that it um, reduces tries to reduce the blurriness on the image after the image is formed so basically it um, does it um, you know at, at the post processing level which is not the best method anyway the lens shift is the best method and then the sensor shift and then electronic VR comes in like the last but anyway at the price point even having a VR is a pretty decent thing so uh, this mode the menu actually should differ in different mode for example if I go to easy mode there you see you don't have white balance and all those things and here yeah you have of course but some of the options are not available because I go to easy auto mode now talking about the performance of the Coolpix L30 uh, let's start with the system now it's a terribly slow system uh, when I say slow I don't mean uh, the buttons and everything they react pretty quickly even the shutter sound is very very good and pleasant but the image processing is very very slow now I'm, I'm gonna show you let's say uh, first here the sound it's it's pretty nice so now once you click it's it's not gonna react for some time for about just less than 10 seconds it won't even react see and you cannot take the next photo I'm pressing shutter button and now it takes and again you have to take a long time so it takes a very very long time before it's ready to take the next photo uh, the video recording here yeah now it comes there the video recording also takes about two seconds I'm recording it now when I press it see it's again uh, about four to five seconds it's still faster than the still but the still takes a long long time now that's one of the slowest image processing system we've seen uh, it's the XPID C2 image processing engine and that's actually entry level but it's very very slow the autofocus performance is also quite slow but still it's decent for this price point now the image quality are surprisingly good and they are actually better than uh, some of the much higher priced smartphones and uh, even um, you know some some dedicated cameras actually so uh, the image are adequately detailed under enough light and uh, but they are slightly soft when you specifically crop and the good thing is that the saturation and hue are proper and they don't over saturate any color and the details are not missing so although you get slightly softer uh, images under enough light but then the images have good enough detail now it clicks only in JPEG so um, even if it uh, clips the highlights then you cannot get those back uh, because lots of information is lost in the JPEG mode but it's good to see that at least it retains the detail to a large level under enough light on the low light however uh, there's a lot of noise but still I guess it's it's pretty good up to um, I would say a slightly over a slightly decent ISO level maybe about ISO 800 or so um, good to use under artificial light but uh, you know let's say in a restaurant or something even there you would see noise but it's pretty unusable in let's say in a disc or somewhere where there is very very less light now the video is slightly soft again as I say like the images there is no fuzziness as such and uh, what we're really impressed is 
the lens mainly it's a pretty small sensor but the Nikkor lens here is quite good we just wished the VR was not electronic because uh, it's pretty bad and uh, the pictures come are very very blurry even if there is the slightest amount of movement Some of the good things about the L30 is mainly the uh, image quality. They are soft but they retain the details up to a large level under enough light. Also there the saturation and hue is proper. Um, and the low light however it, it, shows, uh, it shows noise but uh, about 5k I think it's a um, good enough quality for image and video. Number two it supports uh, those AA size battery which are easy so, to find everywhere and also are quite cheaper. Uh, 5x zoom is also a decent zoom it's kind of just about doable. You also have 4x digital zoom but uh, you better not use them. Um, the bad thing mainly are two was it the very very slow image processing of the XPH C2 image processing engine plus the um, VR is also kind of you know electronic VR so uh, it shows blurriness it cannot um, stabilize even the slightest of movements also the autofocus is not exactly annoyingly slow but it's still slow but uh, we'd give it to the camera for at this price point uh, the image processing really could have been faster now uh, well competition wise more than the dedicated cameras the smartphone at the price point of about 10 to 15k would really compete with this guy and we've seen the likes of let's say mi3 or even the asus zenfone 5 they click pretty decent photograph which are very very closely um, you know match with the details and saturation levels of uh, this particular camera so why would you buy the Coolpix L30 if you buy it at all now, there could be two reasons number one and the most feasible one is that uh, you do not want to drain the battery of your smartphone when you're traveling so you want a dedicated camera body you do not want to use the camera of your uh, phone because that uses a lot of battery and uh, so you have this dedicated camera body with almost the same level of image and video quality as your 10 to 15k phone gives plus you also you get this pencil battery so you can purchase this uh, pencil battery from virtually any shop um, the second thing would be that you have a pretty entry level phone let's say a less than 10k phone where the image and video quality is not exactly up to the mark of this camera because this camera has uh, for the phone standards a pretty big um, you know sensor size 1 by 2.3 inch also has a very good uh, 5x optical zoom you do not get an optical zoom on a phone um, you know I mean even on the flagship let alone for uh, sub 10k phones so this could be two main reasons for you know getting these cameras if you like this video please hit the like button ask anything related to this camera and we'll try to answer them all and please subscribe to our channel for more such awesome content in future thank you